well, hopefully the car is fixed, but uh, I have some extra parts that I don't know where they go. Hopefully I don't need them because tomorrow I'm heading into town and I'm bringing you along with me. This morning, Kenai and I are heading off into town because I have some business I have to take care of in Anchorage. So I'm going to bring you along with us and do a bit of shopping while I'm there. It's been almost a year since I've done my last comparative shopping and I'd like to do it again and show you what the prices are currently here in Alaska. My last few videos have had to do with what it takes to get to Alaska and what you can expect as far as some hidden cost um, once you arrive here. And one of the things everybody talks about is the price of groceries in Alaska and how expensive they are. Well, you might be surprised to see how much the prices vary and how little they vary depending upon where you're at. And so I'll be showing you what the prices are in Glen Allen as well as Barrow Yukovic and then of course in the Matsu Valley and the surrounding areas. And not only that, but I'll be comparing those prices to what they are in the lower 48. So stick around to see that, but for now, I'm going to try to focus on the road and get us safely into town. for any noise that the tires on the road might be making but here along the Richardson Highway it is rather icy this morning there's some packed ice and some black ice even so I'm taking my time and focusing on the road while I film but as you can see my car is fixed luckily and I'm not the one who fixed it despite the jokes at the beginning of the video the gentleman who plows my driveway, his son has started a mobile mechanic service. And so he came out and he was able to get my car up and running. He replaced the coil packs that Adam over at Alaska Cut the Cord had suggested I replace. And then as I mentioned in my last video about how the vehicle wouldn't start, I suspected that the solenoid had gone out in the vehicle and he replaced that along with the starter. And so if I run into any car troubles along the way, I'll be sure to let everybody know. But right now, the vehicle is handling fine. As I mentioned, the road is icy this morning. Uh, the road that I live on is still rather snow packed. And after the last big storm that came through, I had 54 inches of snow at the snow pole. Over the last few days, though, it's kind of warmed up. It's been in the mid 20s to low 30s and that has allowed for some melting to occur. The snow has started to slide off the roof on the south side, not the north side yet, but at least the south side um, has begun to slough off. And I'm hoping that as I continue into town that the roads get better because this is a bit sketch. So I'm gonna focus on the road and then uh, once I get into town, I'll bring you along for some of my um, outings and then we're gonna make a surprise visit while we're in town.
only a couple of places that I actually like to shop. One being Costco, um, which I didn't do when I first arrived here, but I have found that it's worth it to have a Costco card, especially when you're trying to stock up for long periods of time like I do. And then the other one is New Sagaya Asian Market. So let's head in there first and then we'll head off to Costco. Can you see Kenai? He's excited. He loves to be in town. While I'm in town this morning though, I'm gonna hit up a couple of the thrift stores and the antique stores. I don't really need anything, but it's my favorite pastime is to go th walking through the old antique stores and just see what I can find. If I find something practical, I might come home with some goodies, but most likely not. I'm not really looking for anything. But one of my favorite stores to go shopping at is Lazy Dog Antiques.
this time around were outrageous. That sweater I was looking at was $89. It was a nice sweater, but not $89 worth. And then that little um, Pyrex bowl I picked up was $139. And that little lantern I showed at the end was $450. Now, I realize some things are collector's items and they go for a lot of money, but sometimes I think they're just throwing out prices and see what sticks. And I don't know about you, but I can't afford things like that. That's outrageous. whining in the back seat and I spent the night in Palmer. We did not get a good night's sleep, unfortunately. I'm just not cut out for city life. The noise, for one, just uh, the traffic and things like that, but then also the people that were in the room next to me were partying all night long and well into this morning. So we're on our way now, uh, but we decided to make a detour. It's quite out of our way but I think it'll be worth it because I'm actually going to go surprise Phyllis from Alaska Cut the Cord and thank her uh, and hoping that she'll give the message on to Adam for fixing my car so it's run great like I said yesterday um, but yeah so we're off to to give a little surprise visit to Phyllis this morning My phone unfortunately died right after Phyllis walked in the door, but I got to spend some time catching up with Phyllis and then I headed over and saw Adam at his place of employment and we spent a little bit of time chatting and I got to thank him personally for his advice on fixing my car. One nice thing about this YouTube community and building a community here in Alaska in the area in which I live is that there are so many nice people and so many people that are willing to help when you're really in need. It's also nice to be self-sufficient and self-reliant, but every now and then, as I've mentioned in some recent videos, you just gotta reach out for help. And Adam and Phyllis are some of the most genuine people I've ever met, as well as the friends that I've made here in my community. And so I'm very grateful for all of them.
Did you see the moose? No? Well, I almost didn't see it either. And it just goes to show how difficult it can be to see obstacles in the road when you're driving on these remote highways in Alaska. There's no street lights. And once that sun starts to set, everything takes on the same tonality, basically is in grayscale, if you will. Moose also don't have any eye shine. So as you're driving along and they're in the shadows, they become rather difficult to see. And the highways are a bit windy in areas and that can even cause further uh, concern when approaching an obstacle or a moose or an animal in the road. Luckily, I was able to keep control of my vehicle as I went around him. And for your sake, I cut out the scream that I put out after seeing the moose. But let's talk about the grocery prices. So when it comes to New Sagaya Market, the prices there you have to be careful. I didn't show a lot of the prices there, but I wanted to show that New Sagaya has many of the same items that you would find in a traditional store. Some of their items are going to be 50% more than you would find in any other store. But the one thing I like about New Sagaya is that I can find produce there that I cannot find in a traditional grocery store and different cuts of meat as well. So that's one of the reasons that I like to shop there. But let's talk about the prices for your average grocery store throughout Alaska. Now, I am showing prices from Glen Allen, the IGA store in Glen Allen, as well as prices from various stores in the Matsu Valley, as well as Barrow, which is located at the top of the state, um, just because that is known to be one of the most expensive areas of Alaska. And then also, we're going to compare those prices to what they are in the lower 48. Now, I have a friend that was able to send me some pricing from the HEB stores in Texas. So that'll be our qualifier, if you will, and then we'll compare against that. I've gone ahead in the upcoming slides and shown you who had the highest price on something and who had the lowest price. One other thing that I want to talk about, though, is two stores in particular in Palmer, and that would be Fred Myers and Cars. In Palmer, they are right across the street from each other. And there's a big difference when you're in those stores. The first thing you'll notice is that when you go into cars, which is essentially Safeway or Albertsons, that the store is practically empty of people. It's a very nice store. It's very clean, but their prices can tend to be a bit higher than uh, Fred Meyers is. And so that's why Fred Meyers tends to be a bit busier, more popular. But also the other thing to keep in mind is is that they're not necessarily the most expensive. One of the most popular stores in Alaska, even though there are a few of these stores, is Three Bears. Three Bears is a store in Alaska that is very popular. There are only a few of them located throughout the state of Alaska, and they were privately owned, but recently they have been um, merged or acquired by one of the native corporations, I believe, and they become more corporatized. But their prices, I was kind of surprised to see how high they were on some things. But let's go ahead and um, move right on into those slides. One other thing that I want to talk about is when I did this price comparison a year ago, I or almost a year ago, I was all over the map with things that I was showing. This time, I decided to show like items for like items. So when I show you the slides, I'm basically just showing you a general category, butter, bread, things like that but I'm just showing you the cheapest of the cheap. I'm not showing you uh, a name brand compared to a store brand. I'm not showing you, um, you know, one cut of meat versus a different cut of meat and then trying to compare what the prices are. So this time around, I just chose cheap white bread, cheap white eggs, butter, milk, whole milk gallon, and then hamburger meat. Just the simple basics that you might need to go to the grocery store if you were on a limited budget and needed to provide some sustenance for yourself or your family. So uh, let's roll right into the slides and then we'll talk about what some of the surprises were in reviewing that footage.
just like everywhere in the nation, prices have increased here. But I was kind of surprised to see that they haven't gone up that much. And in some cases, they remained flat. But one thing that I do want to point out is that some of the places where you would expect to find bargains, where you would expect the prices to be lower, they weren't, like Costco. And I'd heard this recently from some other channels that prices at Costco were more expensive than they were at the grocery store on produce, bread, milk, things like that. And that was definitely the case here from what I saw. And then for other instances, places that you would expect to be way more expensive, like Barrow, because they have to uh, barge or fly everything in because there were no roads leading to Barrow, the prices were actually less on some instances. So the point of showing you these prices is so that, again, if you are planning a move to Alaska, that you know what to expect. Uh, because there's a lot of talk about how expensive it is to live up here but you might be surprised to find that in some cases, the prices are very similar to the lower 48. And again, not all places in lower 48 are inexpensive to live in. Some places are more expensive than others. And Alaska just happens to be one of those places that might be more expensive than where you're located. But if you'd like to know more about living in Alaska, be sure to check out these videos here. And again, I wanna say thank you to all of my members, as well as those on Patreon, those that support me through PayPal, and who have bought merchandise through my store. I appreciate each and every one of you.